Welcome to another super day in Tel Aviv, Jaffa. Uh, today is the first day that we had rain and it's a little bit cloudy. Look at the rough sea. And I'm not sure that you will be able to hear me now. I'll try to be more noisy than the sea. What I'm going to do today is the first long video of a tour in Jaffa. Um, and let's see what will happen. Uh, it may be too, too windy now, then uh, lots of breeze. Then I will uh, be quiet soon for like two minutes. Enjoy the view. What you can see there is the old city of Jaffa and you can see that it's like a small hill. It's not flat. And the question is, why? And we will answer it soon. Then enjoy the sea. Lots of wind. Look how beautiful it is. The sign says in Hebrew and Arabic here, don't swim here, it's dangerous. There's no lifeguard, lots of rocks. that you survived the noise but I'm going to a much quieter place The river is mostly flat, but not Jaffa, no, at least not the old city of Jaffa. Then you can rent your scooter here and your bicycle, which for me it's a little bit dangerous if you ask me. But um, when you will reach Tel Aviv, you will find that there's a lot of um, bicycle lane, lanes. Mm. I love the old city of Jaffa, it's totally different than Tel Aviv, it's like old and new. Impressive. And if you've been in Jaffa, let's say, five years ago, let me tell you that it's a totally different story now. And it's going to be so new and newer when you will come. Because they are renovating a lot, they know the potential of that city for tourists and for the local citizen of uh, Tel Aviv and Israel actually. We're talking about a city of uh, let's say 2,000 years, uh, sorry 4,000 years old at least. But let's cross it safely to the clock tower. If you are in Tel Aviv, it's or a walking distance from the center, or just take a bus. It's uh, not so difficult. We reach the clock, st uh, clock square, and from here we will begin our tour. But not before 
I will sit a little bit because it's going to take us a few minutes to understand what's happening here. First of all, you saw that the old city of Jaffa is actually on top of the hill. The rest is flat. Then why? Why Jaffa is different than, than any other place around here? It's very easy. Israel was built, I mean, it's not Israel, is on the border, on the bridge between Africa, Asia, and Europe. If you wanted to conquer the world, you had to start from Israel, and then the Middle East, and then uh, Europe, Africa, and Asia. Then in that case, so many people conquered Israel, destroyed all evidence, built their own uh, cities, and someone else came to destroy those evidence, build their own cities. All right, then why everything is flat here and only Jaffa, the whole city of Jaffa is not? Mainly because in Israel, there are few places that if you want to control this country, and by that, to control the world, uh, you must actually um, conquer it. One of them is the most important um, port, harbor, in the middle of Israel. And that is the port, the port of Jaffa. Then, Jaffa became to be a target. City, on top of a city, on top of a city, on top of a city. What he saw there, the small hill, it's not small hill. It's actually artificial layers of cities. City on top of a city, on top of a city, on top of a city. Then Jaffa as a city was more important to the one who came to conquer the world than the one who wanted to visit uh, Jerusalem. Sounds strange, isn't it? But Napoleon never been in, uh, uh, in Jerusalem, but he conquered Jaffa. Richard the Lionheart. He was a crusader. He came for Jerusalem, never been in Jerusalem. The importance of Jaffa as part of the highway for controlling the world is more important than Jerusalem as the holy city. Then that was the square. And it looked like a market in the Arabic uh, time. But then the government, the new rulers say, all right, we do have a huge connection from here to Europe. A lot of people are buying, are coming to Jerusalem to see Israel, and, and this is the entrance of um, that place. That's not good. Then in that case, he decided to change it. I'm going to try something then. If it won't be easy, then um, for me, then excuse me for that. What I mean by trying something, I'm going to show you some pictures, and that's for the first time um, in my tours, mainly because um, I don't know how to deal with the Kimbell and uh, pictures together. Then I'm trying to do that, all right? Let me try to show it to you, and you will tell me if it's okay by you, if it was okay or not. Oh, you can hear the bells of the church. This is the Middle East. Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Turkey, Lebanon, Syria, Egypt, Sudan. But look at that. Trying to figure out, yeah, 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 Israel. Such a small place. But still very important to understand the location. I mean, you can see that Israel is a bridge between Africa, Asia, and Europe. If you look at the map of Israel, including the West Bank and Gaza Strip, this is Gaza, we are here at Jaffa, Tel Aviv Yafo, Yafo it's Jaffa in Hebrew, and you can see that that's the highway to the rest of the world, and it's the closest port to Jerusalem as well. 
there's a lot of wind here and the, and the, this is the square that we are actually staying here uh, you will recognize it soon but you can see that it's kind of um, a, an Arabic market with camels horses fruit and vegetables and you will recognize that look at that arch it is see the arch that used to be the police station of uh, Jaffa later on um, it used to be that Kishle the Arab the Ottomans um, uh, police station the British police station later on uh, Israeli and uh, Israeli used it too and one of the men who actually been captured there, been there in, 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 in the prison, said one day I will buy that place and I will turn it into something else. And he did it. He bought it and built a beautiful hotel, five star hotel, an amazing hotel at the entrance to Jaffa. Then you saw that picture, let us see another one. I think it works. And here, Remember that he decided to build something instead of it. That he decided to build a clock watch, the clock tower, which is right here. Then you can see that he turned it first to a small garden, and soon you will see the clock tower. That's the Kishle, the police station, right here. Why to build a clock tower in the middle of the city? First of all, he wanted to make it a little bit more European. For that, he started to build the new Saraya, the new uh, police station right here. And look at that building. It doesn't look like a regular um, ancient Arabic place, although there are so many motif, Arabic motif here, but that, for sure, it's something else. And then he said, the Sultan at that time, Abdul Hamid II, is celebrating 25 years as a ruler of uh, the city. And he needs to get a present. Then they decided to build for him clock towers. There were five clock towers in Israel and 100 clock towers all over uh, the place. And remember, we talked about the market, the, the garden, you can see it right here in front of you. And here, it's gonna, it's gonna build a clock tower. It wasn't so easy, it's, it's quite expensive then. As you can see here, he already built the two stories, but they had no money to build the third story. Gosh, what will happen with Jaffa? To the left, that is the first shopping mall in Israel, belongs to the Greek Orthodox Church until today. The first layer were the shops and the upper part is where the, shop, the shopkeepers, actually um, shop owners, uh, lived. It was covered and in Israel it was so important because of the humidity and the heat. There. There was someone who actually um, had a watch. At that time, we are talking about 1903, 1906. Um, nobody had watches. Usually they had a sign light, but you know, in that kind of day, which is a little bit gray, there's no option for sign light. They didn't know what's the time. Then they used to go to him, the people, and ask him, Yosef, what's the time? Yosef, what's the time now? Yosef, what's the time? Oh, you got the message. It's annoying. Then he decided to donate the third part <coughs> to, uh, to the clock tower. Now look at the differences. First and second one, look at behind, uh, above the windows and the doors. You see that they decorated it, and it's not easy to decorate it, decorate places. Um, 
that built with limestone. I was sorry, with uh, sandstone, called car. Not easy. Look at the clock that he donated, uh, the window that he donated. Totally flat. Now look at the columns, the kind of columns on the side of the tower. It's round here, a little bit noisy. Yeah, this is the center of the city and I started there too early to avoid it. <clears throat> then you can understand what will happen soon. Look at the second story, still round corners. Ah, what about the third one? Not that flat. Here it is. We do have a clock tower. We had five clock towers, I already mentioned it. One of them was on top of Jaffa Gate in Jerusalem. And I'm sure that you watch my videos, and if not, please do that, and you will see that there's no clock tower at Jaffa Gate anymore, mainly because the British didn't like it. Now when we know everything, let's continue the tour, but let me organize my bed first. Beautiful, isn't it? Let me show you what actually happened at the day that they um, published it to the public. They celebrated. Nineteen. O three or O two, you can see the clock tower here. Kind of two kiosks that are not here anymore. Flags of the Ottomans. The shopping mall that you already know is right here, and we are heading to the city. What you saw now was the plaza outside the city. This is the clock tower and if I'm talking about um, local uh, shops then there are so many here. Castro, it doesn't sound like an Israeli fashion but it is and it's quite a good one I must say. You can see right there the original cover of the shopping mall. The weather is amazing. Yesterday it was 30 degrees, today it's only 28, but there's no sun yet. And um, we might have a little bit of rain, uh, and I hope that we won't. To show you that uh, it belongs to the Greek Orthodox, look at the symbol. Here it is. Above the above the gate and this is the tafos the symbol of the holy land keeper by the uh, greek old dogs all right you're not looking at the red sign another important uh, place that i want you to meet it's there it's called Abu Lafia uh, and it's a wonderful Arabic bakery. Excellent, not so expensive, not expensive at all actually, and very fresh, very good, and it's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Then where we are according to it, this is the clock tower at Yefet Street. And Abu Lafia is there in Pasto Street, but um, when you will reach a clock tower, everyone knows uh, uh, where it is, and you don't need to remember Abu Lafia, just say the bakery, a famous Arabic bakery. And behind those buildings, it's the flea market, and I don't know if you will be able to visit it today, but uh, I will try. I will try. Look at the differences here. At, uh, at, at the um, road. And ah, look how beautiful it is. 
Then what it is and why there's some science on the the road. I mean, it looks different. And what is that? That. Let's move to the other side. Because it would be better to show you everything from there. It's a Seville. Rat, or in a way, uh, place to drink water or to purify your legs. What I'm going to tell you, it's not a real history, but it's a beautiful legend. That was the, access, the entrance to the city, and the one who controlled the city didn't allow people to enter from uh, 6 p.m. until 6 a.m. But he himself reached that place. After 6 p.m. and he couldn't enter. There was no water. There was a lot of fruit. A lot of orange. Oranges. Or Jaffa oranges. All over it was huge orchard. Rich Tel Aviv. And. And. He didn't know what to do. I mean people are suffering. There's no water then. The day after. Uh, he built it, but it's not so true. Um, what is true is that he used marble from Ashkelon and from Caesarea. And if you saw a video of mine a few days ago about Caesarea, it's part of it. Uh, because you want to impress above it. It's the stamp of Abdul Hamid II, the um, uh, Sultan from the Ottomans and sentences from the Quran and people used to wash their legs and hands before they entered to the most important um, mosque. Look how beautiful is that mosque. Look at the cover. It was beautiful, isn't it? This is the Jama mosque, the mosque that people are praying mainly in on Friday and today they will. But why? Why there's differences here? Because from here to there, it was a wall. Especially here, you can see the wall goes all the way there and through there. Why? Because the only entrance to Jaffa was from there. This is the main gate. It doesn't look like a main gate now, but it was the main gate of Jaffa at that time. Then in that matter, if a car, at that time there was no car, wanted to reach that area, they couldn't. For example, if the scooter is entering into the wall now, and those cars as well. We will enter through the main gate. The main gate is called Jerusalem Gate. Just like in Jerusalem, there's a um, Jaffa Gate leads to Jaffa. Say Bokertov, Bokertov Lecha. Now a gate in Jaffa is not like a small thing because the walls were very, very messy. Remember, Jaffa in a way was more important than Jerusalem. If you wanted to conquer the world. And that is only the first part of the wall. Ah, look at that! Oh, yesterday uh, someone wrote me that I'm actually turning too fast. I must do that slowly. I will do that slowly. Here you can see a tower. At least the base of a tower of that gate. Now, when you enter to the city, you enter while you're turning right and then left. Oh, why? To make your life miserable if you are um, entering um, to the city and wartime, if you're a soldier. And you will turn right and usually 
your let's say rival will be on the right side it will be close to the to the wall you won't be able to deal with it and this is still still the gate massive isn't it the walls are not here anymore mainly because uh, after Napoleon conquered the city they realized that there is no reason for walls Achalfanim Street What are you doing when you are reaching a new country with a new currency, a different currency? You exchange it. This is the exchange street, changer street. Achalfanim, it's in Hebrew. And you can see here, uh, if you're talking about um, uh, um, science, street science, then you can see that it's always in three languages. Hebrew, Arabic, and English for the tourist. Guess what? We are still in the gate area. So let's enter through it. A wonderful fish restaurant. I myself not eating fish, but if you like fish, it's quite a good idea. Ah, uh, looks like Greek, Greece, yes, isn't it? That, that's, that's Jaffa. It's a mixture between beauty, old, fashion, and um, happiness. Let's go through it. This is the main road and you can see that that main road is um, quite wide. We are at Atzolfim Street. Those are the one who deals with um, gold, silver, Mainly uh, at the time of the Ottomans, look how beautiful that's, those windows are. At the time of the Ottomans, uh, the currency wasn't so so wasn't good. The people preferred to bring themselves um, uh, not money, not local money. They brought uh, gold, uh, silvers, uh, silver, and then they exchanged it here for better currency better rates a lot of artists you can find in uh, and Jaffa and uh, this is part of it all right oh you can put a coin there <laughs> and you will get it there or not Nice, that, that is new for me. I've been here two weeks ago, I didn't see it, or maybe I didn't pay attention for that. If the idea of the ancient pictures, the old pictures that I show you is okay, please tell me that, and then I will start editing the other videos of ours. Look at the Bougainvillea. I'm still happy that I'm alone here. Jaffa was so crowded, it's like every old city. Um, but in 1936, the Arabs uh, decided to revolt against the um, British. British had no fear from that, and they told them tomorrow uh, you're gonna leave Jaffa because we're gonna destroy part of it. Why to destroy it? Because by that we will control you better way, in a better way. And they did it. That's why there's a lot of open spaces and green parks. Later on. When the Israeli came to here, 
when it became part of Israel in 1948, uh, Hamas said that they destroy another part of it. For me, it's, uh, it's a sin. Because you're destroying history, you're destroying private houses. Another gate. And that was the new gate. What do you mean gate? There's no walls here. No, of course there's no. But it used to be. Um, at the 18th century, the late 18th century, 19th century, they realized that there's no reason for walls here. And they destroy it and build houses instead of it. But just three years before they destroyed it, uh, the local people here asked to build a gate that carriages will be able to enter to the to Jaffa talking about the Ottoman style then they did it and then I must tell you that that gate is the only evidence of the wall in that area <laughs> let's continue you can see the beautiful um, uh, stones I'm talking about the um, sandstone but above it it's uh, made of cement then you can understand it it's kind of layers of places because I came early I couldn't enter with you to that beautiful restaurant and uh, when you will come back to go into it uh, but I don't know if you can see something. It used to be a street and they cover it. Oh, all right then. We came on time. As I believe, or at least I hope that it's going to be crowded today. Then let me wait for him. Hit the road. Then he let me. Oh, Look at that. Look at that. The name of the restaurant is Candidoff. Here it is. For the one who will ask me where it is, um, just look at uh, Google it. It's there. Amazing. I mean, look at the bar here. Uh, remember it used to be a street there's so many holes here and we are the first and the only one here private rooms and it goes on and on and on and then turn right I mean it's beautiful isn't it now we know it Ta -da. and um, you're most welcome As you can see, we are climbing up a little bit, a little, a little bit. And that's the beauty of the tour. Uh, you will climb. But I can do that in a mild way. Oh, I love those birds. Just beautiful. Why is running? It's not hot. This is the new hotel. Jaffa Hotel. I think it belongs to the W um, chain. It used to be owned by the Christians. Uh, it was a hospital, a French hospital, a later on a church and a nunnery. And now uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful hotel. I mean, from here it's ugly but it's really beautiful. It's maintained all the ancient part. 
that you find here like walls um, not a cheap one but really beautiful and if I'll find a place to stay I will show you something that actually talks to me and this is the only remain of the monastery that used to be here the last remain oh a cat and look at that it's a floating olive, uh, sorry, orange tree. Do -do -do. Do -do -do. And a beautiful healthy cat as well. Gosh, this is such a beautiful thing. Let me go backward and take a picture of it. All right, let's start with orange trees. There were so many orchards here and the brand or Jaffa oranges was well famous secondly the sculptor who did it Ran Morin let me show you the name in 1903 decided to show the world that although the Jews were exiled from uh, the land for 2000 here when they came back they flourished again although most of their time they didn't touch the land of Israel beautiful idea isn't it remember that door and let me see if I will be able to show you the pictures that I wanted to show you This is the first picture that I wanted you to see. You can see how green Jaffa was, and you can see the top of Jaffa as well. So many kind of fruit and vegetables, mainly because we do have fresh water. I mean, just dig for like two meters, a few feet, and you will find it. Another picture that I want you to see is Jaffa, and if you look Carefully, you can see that there's no green spaces and it's so crowded. That is Jaffa before the British decided to change the story. This is part of the monastery that used to be instead of the um, hotel that you saw, but here that's how it looks like. And that part is, is already there. I mean, you can see it, but one I wanted to show you that Ran Morin did something like that in Jerusalem. I mean, floating trees. This is olive trees in Jerusalem and can find so many kind of different trees uh, all over uh, Israel. That's the works of uh, Ran Morin. But that is the most important picture that I wanted to show you. From the door that I'll show you, and I'll show it to you soon, soon uh, again, two nuns used to go out. You can see two nuns, that's one and that's the other one. Used to go out and feed the cats. That was the door, right there, and here you could see the area that they used to feed the cats. They did it at 4 a.m. and 4 p.m. every day. After they took off the monastery, or oh no, the monastery is still there, but it's not functioning as a nunnery anymore, uh, the nuns are still doing it. They rent an apartment in uh, Jaffa. They didn't move back to Jerusalem, at least that was true before the corona time. And they are, they stay here to feed the cat. And the beautiful thing is that after they fed the cat and every cat had her own dish, uh, they told the cats, go away now because if not the city hall will catch you because you're a stray cat. Amazing, isn't it? Then let me organize everything and we will continue. Yeah, the cat here is looking at me and says, feed me, feed me. Of course, I love cats. Why do we have a lot of cats? Because we have uh, the best climate for cats and, uh, and we don't have any more, any other wild animals in Tel Aviv and Jaffa and in Israel. A lot of exhibitions are in the street of uh, Jaffa and a lot of um, galleries. Everything is closed now, mainly because of. Uh, look at that. 
because of um uh it, because it's early and coronavirus there are no tourists here let's walk a little bit uh through the alleys of that beautiful city i mean in every every alley here is um is, is, is a story and if you're talking about stories napoleon uh, conquer Israel in 1799 and he entered through that area. It wasn't a gate, but he knew that it's the easiest part of, uh, of uh, Jaffa and the order the general to go through here and the general when he entered that area he smell wine good wine. That was the Christian quarter of the old city of Jaffa. And what he did, he entered through that door that used to be a winery, a school wine winery, until a few years ago. And, and he found the wine. But what he found more was the exit or the entrance to the hidden entrance to the um, city. Above you, this is uh, part of the wall, remember? I mean, that was part of the wall. Um, then above it, you could find, at that time, more than 4,000 uh, Ottoman soldiers. And he entered through here. And that's how Napoleon conquered the city. Now, that story of the first uh, officer that entered to the city was so famous to some people who lives here that one of them, Menachem Golan, decided to go to Hollywood uh, um, and to produce Rambo. Then this is the name of uh, the first uh, the first soldier, the first officer, the French officer. Let's face it, Rambo. And I'm sure that I'm not pronouncing it well. It's um, not an American name. It's so beautiful to see it without tourists. And today there will be a lot of Israelis here. Why? Because it's for free. Why? Because it's beautiful. Let's face it. I hope that you will love it as well. Before we will visit the city, they just opened um, an ancient place. They um, renovated it uh, lately, and they opened it like a week, two weeks ago. Then let's go and visit it. Palm trees olive trees I know that place but not as now then I'm entering entering to it for the first time after they renovated it lucky with you The signs, explanation, explanation signs are not here yet. Wow. You know what you're looking at? This is a gate to uh, an Egyptian government house. Egyptian? What the Egyptian did here? Remember, Israel was so important to everyone who wanted to control the world. And the Egyptian did it a few times. Let me tell you a story how it's happened. We're going back to the, let's say, 13th, 14th, 15th century BC. 
that place was owned by the Canaanite. But the um, Egyptian king knew that if he won't conquer it, he won't rule the world. And what he did is sent one of his officers and uh, that officer came with lots of vases full with wheat. Egypt was the wheat farm of the world at that time. And with the saw of the king and he said, the Egyptians are going away, they couldn't conquer you, but I'm staying with the bravest one and you are braver than my ex-boss. And because of it, I'm giving you that offer. Now the Canaanite king wasn't so, you know, um, he, knew, he knew that it can be a trick. Then he checked every vase of wheat and because there was nothing there except the wheat, they entered with it into the city. And I think you know exactly what's happened. Soldiers went out of those, those vases, opened the gate of the city, and that was the end of the Canaanite city. And this is the gate from the Ramses II, from the 13th century BC. Amazing, isn't it? But the Egyptians were here even before it. it can take us to, uh, we can go back to the 19th century in BC. Amazing. I love that story. They kept that place mainly because of the harbor. I forgot to mention harbor. Um, when you took a cruise at, let's say, 19th century BC, you couldn't sail from Alexandria, Egypt, straight to Rome or to Greece. You couldn't do that. Then how come? You had to sail through the coast of the Middle East. And one of them was Jaffa, and it was a very big one. Then, here it is, another reason to occupy it. Uh, uh, Jaffa. Did I say Gaza? Gaza was a very important port as well. I'm talking about Jaffa now. Mainly because it was close to Jerusalem. Mainly because it's um, uh, it's in the center of uh, Israel. All right. Did I tell you that we are going through the shops, through the street? We will do that. But first, let's climb. Uh, to the top of uh, uh, Old Jaffa, top of the hill, and I'm still alone here. It might be a little bit no, no wind. No, it looks okay. The clouds tells us that it might rain, but we don't trust the cloud, don't we? Look at the amazing view. Wow, there are so many things to talk about it here. It's already 50 minutes tour. Gosh. Gosh. It's amazing. If you reach that part, please write me, Tzachi. We reach um, the view of, from the uh, from Jaffa to Tel Aviv. Yay! It's such a beautiful day. i so happy that I decided to do that now when it's a little bit grey. 
because it's not as hot as it was supposed to be and um, tomorrow it used to be the first day of uh, of autumn in uh, in Israel yeah autumn yeah and, and it looks like it all right what we can see from here <clears throat> that's Tel Aviv all the skyscrapers are part of it. Wait, wait. You're watching my video for the first time and you didn't subscribe my channel? Please do that and push the bottom as well, the bell as well, and you will be able to see to watch my latest videos. And I love it. Tel Aviv and the cities around Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv is not a big city, it's 400,000 habitats, but it's kind of the center, it's like New York. Um, uh, Manhattan. Yeah, lots of people are here because they want to, good, uh, to live the good life. Because of its rain, you can see the mountains of Judea and Samaria. And this is already right there. This is already the West Bank. And if you're not taking the West Bank as part of Israel, now you know how narrow Israel is. It started from there, and hence here. You can see the Mediterranean Sea. Today it's quite rough. Um, I see it's the end of the season, but a few of the coasts there are um, <clears throat> open for you 24 hours a day not 24 hours a day but all here and we do have more than 10 kilometers of it what's that church and why there's a church in the Holy Land and in Jaffa Jaffa is very important for the Christians that is the house of Simon the Tanner according to the book of Acts actually we do have two one for the Catholic and one for the Greek Orthodox and the Armenian, but it's the same idea. And here when St. Peter got the message, the vision of the sack full of non-clean animals that God told him to butcher and eat. Until then, he said, I cannot do that. I'm a Jew. Jew eat only kosher food. From here, by the uh, one near, by the by the order of Cornelius, he went with two of the servants, uh, Cornelius' servants, and one Roman soldier to Caesarea. And I took some videos, amazing videos of Caesarea. And let me show you where Caesarea is. But the trees are not helping me there. All right, you can see the coast of. see the coast of Israel at the far far away you can see a city that's Natania and behind it it's Heder and it's there not so far isn't it now everything is small in the Holy Land and the first non-Jew was converted to future Christianity Let's continue. Beautiful. Gan Hapisga. Gan Hapisga. It's a difficult name to um, remember it. You might remember it by the name Abraham Park, but no one knows Abraham Park. They know the uh, word Pisga. Let's continue to something that I really love. It's called the Wishing Bridge. And let us read it together. An ancient legend holds that anyone boarding the bridge holds this, its zodiac sign and looks at the sea, the wish will, become, will come true. Okay, welcome to the Western Wall of Jaffa, the Wailing Wall of Jaffa. And um, I will do this slowly, slowly, 
when you will uh, see your zodiac, just push the button, stop, look at the sea and pray. Ask for something. It's mine, I'm holding it. All right, you do have a problem <laughs> to watch the sea. Then what I'm gonna do, touch it and pray. The sea is a little bit there. Lovely idea, isn't it? Now it's an ancient story from let's say 20 years ago but still one day it will be ancient such a beautiful place We will turn right here to the galleries and shops that I promised you. And don't worry, we are not only going to stop there. I know that some of you will be happy to stop and shop. Ruti, I know that you will. Such an amazing weather. Short lives. It's not. It's not cold at all. It's um. Let me see. Uh, supposed to be 27 degrees, 85. It, it, it's perfect. And not so. And not so um. Um. Humid. House built by the Crusaders and the Mamluks. And it's for sale. Beautiful building. Mamel Cloud, the Muslims said the 15, uh, 13, 14, 15th century AD. There's a map here of Jaffa. Let's see what we did until now. We started a tour at the clock tower and then we entered to the old city. Through here we saw the Khalfamin Street. It's a, that's the um, gate. We went through Hatsofim Street. We saw the floating tree. And we are right here. We already saw the Ramses Gate. And P a Pisga Garden. Now we can see how it looks. Uh, and we're going to visit a little bit the shopping area. 
and the Simon the Tanner house, the port. We saw the church of St. Peter, so it's closed now. Um, I wanted to go in, but we will go through there. You can see the flag of Israel, the gay flag as well. Uh, in Tel Aviv, there's a big community of gays. Uh, this is kind of a, an open city that accepts everyone. Look how beautiful it is of the Marburg Stein. The smell of the flowers are amazing. Mm, no, 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 those flowers. It's amazing too. I'm talking about everything here. Such a beautiful place. That, that part of the city I really love. Oh, the names. The names of the street are by the names of their zodiac signs. Remember the cats that are well fed? Yet here they are. <laughs> did I mention that I love cats? Yeah, I did. I'm sure that I did. Ba da dum. Ba da dum. Look how beautiful it is. Oh. Now let's talk about the, <coughs> sorry, the street. There are a lot of renting and selling signs because there are no tourists. It, 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 it said that he's living here. So him. Is he sleeping because he's got no air conditioning here? Because the cat knows him for sure. <coughs> Every place here is beautiful. Asimta, the theater Asimta, the alley, is a wonderful theater. It's like off, 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 off Broadway. Some of them are in English as well. Asimta. Then why the streets are narrow? Uh, first of all, real estate. It costs a lot of money to build houses here. I'm talking about from day one until now. Secondly, there's a lot of sun here. And if it will be narrow, there will be a lot of shade and, and, and breeze, and breeze. It's like the air condition of ancient time. Beautiful shops. We always believe that the tourists will come soon, but uh, they were supposed to be here in uh, September, but they delay it again. I'm talking about Israel. I'm not working from February uh, 2020. Ilana Gore is a wonderful museum. She's an artist. And she's got her own museum from things that she made and things that she um, um, collected. And it's her house as well. And you can actually visit her balcony and uh, enjoy the view there as well. Ilana Gore. And when we excavate here, we found um, kind of an hostel, a Jewish hostel, at, uh, from 1740. <clears throat> and, <clears throat> and, sorry, 
<clears throat> what you see here is the synagogue. They divide it into two. The women's section is the back one, backyard, and the men's section is there. Unbelievable. You can see Sukkot, yeah. It's the holiday of Sukkot, and I just uploaded a video about the meaning of Sukkot. Of Sukkot. Um, <clears throat> it's um, one of the three pilgrimage holidays, the festivals that every Jew must visit Jerusalem at that time, and I was there um, yesterday to hear the priest, priestly blessing and to light candles for you um, by your requests and uh, to put some notes at the western wall if you want me to do that go into the uh, inscriptions and you will see the link for buy me a coffee and by first supporting me which i really need it now mainly because i'm not working and i expected to have tourists next month but i know that i won't have um you can ask me to light candles and to and to um, put a note in my small stone as well. And even more, if you do have suggestion, uh, if I'm doing something wrong, if you want to correct me, <coughs> you want to tell me something else, please do that. I'm waiting for you. Look how beautiful is that building. And what I want you to show you, that this is the ancient walls of uh, of the city Ta -da -da. Ta -da -da. Uri Geller Museum I think you know Uri Geller a uh, lot of you knows that he likes to deal with the unknown and he likes to fold some spoons. He became very important, very well known by that. He lived in America for so many years and he decided to build his museum right there. And they open it soon. But if you want to see the biggest spoon ever, Guinness record, it's here. If you don't know who's Huri Keller, that's the one. Spoon bending. And then the certificate that this is the largest till spoon. You can read about Huri Geller uh, in every, every uh, channel that you will choose and here there's something lovely and we're gonna do that Albert Einstein the Bible the New Testament the Quran all together and the Hindu Texas and for love happiness Propos Uri Geller. If you don't know how to write Uri Geller, here's it. And are we going to do that? This time I will do that with one, one hand for you because I'm holding the gimbal. He's got the same hand like me, the same size. All right, Uri Geller. And you can see that there are so many things here from Chinese, Hindus, Muslims. I love it. I love it. I'm optimist. I'm full with hope. Without tourists, but still full with hope. And I'm happy. Then two museums that you must visit, Ilana Gore. And one day we will visit together Uri Geller Museum. I will stop that part of the video now, mainly because I need to drink 
and to make some calls but I will continue the second part of it or today or uh, next time uh, and um, at the end just like they did in uh, Caesarea uh, I will publish it every part by itself it's more than one hour and uh, the second part uh, um, I will do the second part and then at the end I will combine it into one video as well then see you the next video will be about uh, Simon the Tanner uh, about the excellent amazing uh, Alice of the city the port and uh, more see you this is one of the masterpieces of Ilana Gore we talked about it at uh, uh, earlier in the previous video of um, Jaffa part uh, one we will continue in the next half an hour to show you why Jerusalem was sorry Jaffa was a little bit important a little very important for the Christians we already talked about it but we will see it soon I just want to don't want to die and I'm not lying that we already talked about um, St. Peter in Jaffa St. Peter came from the city of Lydia Lord uh, after he resurrected someone when he heard that Tabitha Tzvia in Hebrew um, died and she was a young lady that helped Christianity a lot, he came and resurrected Tabitha. That place is in the other side of Jaffa, maybe we will prepare a different video of it. But after Tabitha, he went to his friend Simon the Tanner. In the first video, we talked about the story, but we will repeat it. Simon the Tanner deals with leather stink then he went to the roof to meditate and um, he saw a vision of a sack full of non-kosher animals goes down by an angel the angel tells him butcher it and it and uh, someone say I'm a Jew I cannot do that I can eat only kosher food. Then he repeats it twice. Uh, twice. What's in Peter? It's always three times. Then he did it another, uh, another time. And then uh, Saint Peter knew that something new is happening here. He's got a message from God. And look at that beautiful door. I'm so happy to have the tour with our tourists. Mm. We're walking down the stairs to see the alleys, but to see the house of Simon the Thunder. When he reached, uh, when he had that vision, at the end of it, he heard a knock on the door and That's the house. And he saw two servants of Cornelius from uh, Caesarea and one soldier who asked him to follow them. Who asked, uh, they asked uh, St. Peter to follow them to Caesarea, to Cornelius. He did it the day after and to make the short uh, the long story short he converting to the new Judaism which we know it as Christianity now then why there's no option to enter to his house mainly mainly it's um, there's a problem here the house belongs to the Zakrian family Armenian family but there's a huge debate between the Muslims 
and the Christians about who owns the house. Until they found out who owns the house, it will be like that. I entered to there once in my lifetime. Look how beautiful is that place. Oh, let me take a picture of it for you. The house of Simon the Tanner. And um, this is one of the only streets that the name of it is not by the name of the Zodiac. It's called Shimona Bruska E, which is in Hebrew. In English, it's Simon the Tanner. Simon, Shimon. Tanner, the one who deals with leather, Bors Kahi. Here it is, number eight. That's the house. Look how beautiful it is. <clears throat> See, that must be, that must be the place. I'm talking about Simon. We will go to the port. And again, remember the alleys are narrow because of the sun, because of the real estate prices, and uh, it's as wide as for one donkey. If one donkey with two sacks can go through here, then it's okay. The houses is, is usually the one who owns the houses now are artists. They have the galleries here as well, but it's not by law. I mean, usually it's like that. Oh, look at that. Look at the Washington, Washington trees. And here we will stop and we will shout. Are the donkeys to the right or to the left? And if there's no donkeys, we will be able to continue. You can see the Greek Orthodox Church right there, St. Michael. And we are going to the port. It's going to be a short tour. Um, maybe later on I will prepare another one, mainly because I do have a child, and she asked me to come. We're supposed to do something together, and I want to be the good father. Another shop that used to be here <clears throat> deals with female. A nice, a nice place. As you see, most of the way, we didn't climb at all. Oh, we did it slowly, slowly. And that's the idea of my tours, to organize that you will enjoy the tour and you won't feel, I mean, you won't suffer. Welcome to the port. <clears throat> now you can see that it's a little bit more, um, more crowded because of two reasons. The first one, it's um, it's uh, not eight o'clock already. Secondly, the breeze is nice here and a lot of people are coming just to enjoy breakfast in one of the places. And there's so many places to reach here. We are walking on the British dock, the Ottomans one, see the stairs there? It's above it. Now at the Ottomans time, you couldn't reach with the big boats to here. Because of the waves and because of so many rocks, there. too many. Then in that matter, Oh, look at that. Mm. 
I love rough sea and that's mainly because we don't have a lot of winter days Then they used to dock in the sea and then small boats used to take them to here uh, the people said that they used to throw uh, the one who took them used to throw their luggage straight to the boat they didn't care about uh, fragile things or something like that and but the one who came to here was so happy mainly because they have uh, been in the sea for like three weeks and they almost died I mean it's so difficult to be in a rough sea it's not like the cruise of today and that's why the first part that they actually saw are the churches the Catholic one St. Peter is on top we actually saw from the viewpoint there's a Greek Orthodox church here Armenian church um, uh, and of course mosques as well this was part of the deck the Ottomans one the custom house was here was here built by the British in a such a ugly way down the city hall decided after so many years to destroy that ugly one and build this beautiful place they didn't finish it yet they will keep it as a memory for that ugly house that used to be here but you can see how beautiful it is from here hallelujah The main entrance is not from here. We saw, remember, we talked about the donkeys. I show you the entrance to St. Michael uh, Church. And soon you will see hundreds of Israelis here enjoying the, uh, the, the uh, enjoy coffee, uh, good cake. We love coffee. Ice cream. And uh, it's difficult to meet to show you if he is a Muslim guy or a woman or or Jew or Christian unless they will dress like their custom for example to the two, two ladies to the right are Muslims women and foot, how bad it can be. not smell is the smell of coffee and my friend the smell is amazing I'm a Catholic my name is Isaac Zahi I'm a Catholic and I love to see a rough sea look at the fishermen are they really gonna catch a fish or not. If you do a bicycle, this is one of the best places for it. Adromeda, part of the Greek mythology, is actually the story was there, and uh, we are talking about beautiful daughter of the queen of and the king of Jaffa, they used to donate to the, to the sea master monster, a beautiful woman every, every year. And um, and um, the last one was daughter of 
it. I'll take the queen. She didn't want it, but the daughter said, this is my job. I'm going to do that. But Procellus actually helped him by destroying um, the monster. Um, how did he did it? Just before that, he cut the head of um, Ivan. And, you know, it's made of lots of snakes. And uh, everyone who looks at the Medusa um, uh, had turned to stone. And that's what happened to the horrible monster. And if I'm talking about that, this is the Armenian monastery. But it's not only Armenian monastery, uh, it's more than that. First of all, you can see the Don't Forget Me flower tells you that in 1915, the Armenians were butchered by the Ottomans, the Turkish. One and a half million uh, died there. This is their genocide. But Adele, those rooms used to be part of the hospital that Napoleon built here for his soldiers. Remember that you saw where uh, Napoleon's entered the city and I told you that there were more than 4,000 um, um, soldiers, the Ottoman soldiers. I do know it because he killed all of them. And uh, what he didn't forget, what he didn't do, he didn't bury them. And you know what's happened after that? A flag actually spread it around his soldiers, and that was the hospital. Now, I know that everyone goes to the Louvre to see Mona Lisa, but at least when I was there for the last time, uh, um, something like three years ago, four years ago, I uh, to the left of. of uh, of uh, Mona Lisa, you could see a beautiful painting of um, Napoleon visiting and, um, six soldiers of his. Now, he ran away from here. Oh, look at the rough sea, I love it! He ran away from here after he was defeated. And he didn't take the soldiers. He told his doctor to kill them, but the doctor said, my job is to cure them, not to kill them. And um, the one who cured them were the Ottomans that came and didn't kill them. They sent them back home. To the right, you can see the sea mask. It's not the same mask that you saw at the beginning, not. And the sea mask is the, the mask that the soldiers, the Muslim, sorry, sailors, actually, when they dug, they went to pray here. That is Tel Aviv in front of you. Beautiful Tel Aviv. What I did is, I'm just like a child. Um, if you didn't subscribe me yet, please do that. I do have more than 19,000 videos uh, of Israel Hand on the Land. And um, in the subs uh, I will add some information in the description of that video together with some links. Link to one, the first one will be to my professional Facebook, not my private one. But my private one is in Hebrew. I didn't finish the tour, yeah? yeah. The second one is of uh, my Instagram. The third one would be um, buy me coffee link and that is very new for me uh, you my subscriber and I have more than 29,000 uh, you ask me uh, to help me in a way I mean and, and I need it I must say at the beginning I, I was too shy to say that I need it I'm not getting money from the government I'm not working from um, 
end of February, the beginning of March 2020. And, uh, and I love what I'm doing. This is my job. I'm too old to find something new. I've got to show you two things. The first one is the wall of the sea. It used to be here. You can see the different kind of storms. That was the Jewish water of the whole city. And in 1948, when the Israeli came back to here and became part of Tel Aviv, um, some of the them started to destroy the whole city of Jaffa. But as a punishment, they realized that they um, destroyed the Jewish quarter of the old city to destroy houses, destroy places. I'm not sure that it's uh, it's something that we need to do, and doesn't matter if it's a political issue or not. Uh, it's history, and that's a little bit. You see a lot of skyscrapers. It's a very lovely. It's a live city. 24 hours a day, even though it's coronavirus time, COVID-19. I'm going to meet my daughter and um, I will ask for, I will see if I, if I do have time to show you a little bit of the flea market. If not, it will be my third video today or another day. I'm not sure that I know. Another Seville or Rat, a place to drink water that was built by the government, the Muslim government of uh, the city. You see it in front of you. There are so many things that you didn't see in that short tour, uh, but you saw a lot. Now you know Jaffa better, and I promised, just like I'm doing it in Jerusalem and other places, to reach back to Jaffa. It's like um, 10 minutes by bus from my house in Tel Aviv. And I will uh, add more tools for it, but we are reaching the Clock Tower Square. That's where we started the tour. Look how beautiful is that entrance to the mosque. There's no entry here, but you can see how people can go in. Women must wear the burqa. Look at the man as well. 90% uh, of the Muslim sites are not welcomed by uh, anyone else who are not Muslim. It's a little bit sad for me because it's a beautiful mask. I've been there only twice, but I won't be able to take some pictures of it for some. Today it's the Friday. Today, around let's say another, another two hours, the Muslims will come to here to pray. Tourist shops you can find everywhere, but most of them are closed mainly because there are no tourists. Remember, that was the entrance, the gate, uh, Jerusalem Gate. Uh, we talked about that in the first video. So watch my first video. Um, above you, you will see a link for uh, the videos of Jaffa. At the end of the video, we'll find a link for videos of Jerusalem. Look how beautiful it is. Masha, Vaksha. I'm sure it's a lens on Holy Water. This is the same. This Okay, Toda. Then I will 
end that video now at the clock tower square um, that was the entrance to the city and you do have I think, I think 20 minutes of it in the first part of Jaffa a video of mine then see you and don't forget to subscribe me thank you very much you see so more crowded if you watch the first video it was almost empty now it's not see you bye bye Again, the third part of the video will be about the flea market uh, of the Jaffa. The flea market is not only the flea market, uh, it's more than that. Uh, you just saw a very good restaurant or coffee place. It's called Niso. It's kind of uh, acting studio. studio, and this is their coffee place. And we are at the flea market. In front of you, you can see my beautiful daughter, Leo, say hello. Leo, she won't, she's 16 years old. Ronit, can you say hello? Teenager. Teenager, yes. <laughs> mm. There are so many things to see here, but not a lot to talk about. But the, the atmosphere is very important. And this is the reason I'm taking it now. Although it's, uh, yes, although it's almost the end of the day for the kosher people because it's Friday, then the kosher restaurants will be closed soon. And because it's Friday, a lot of people are going to slip. Knafe, which is an Arabic place, uh, became very popular in Israel lately, and Yafa Knafe. Is, as you can see, is very popular. At the beginning, like a year before the coronavirus, uh, you couldn't, you had to wait for uh, like an hour for that. that. This is too much for me. I love knafe, but now you can find knafe in every corner. <laughs> Flea market, as you can see, oh. flea market, the prices are in shekel. You will find in the flea market not only um, flea market, I mean you find a lot of good uh, products like that. This is everything but flea. And it's still beautiful. A lot of uh, vintage. Uh, excellent uh, coffee places and restaurants. For example, if you like gelato, one of uh, the best gelato is called Golda. It's in front of you. Let me find a space for that. Here it is. Golda. Excellent gelato. To the right of it, um, it's falafel and sabich. It's called falafel freshman, although it's in Hebrew. Uh, falafel freshman in Frischman Street in Tel Aviv, next to my house, is considered to be one of the best. And that's why you can always see a queue there as well. And this is the new branch of them. Pita pita, pita with you no, know, all kind of stuff. Let's cross the road. Um, I'm going later to there and there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll go to the bus. Okay. See you. Bye bye. Italian restaurant. A very good one. Yeah, it's called Italkia. Italkia, it's a uh, Italian woman in Hebrew. Italkia. And a lot of the flea. Beautiful place, uh, beautiful things. I mean, uh, I bought a lot of stuff. It's usually garbage of someone else. And for me, it was gold, especially um, books. It doesn't function as a flea market on Saturday. Then tomorrow, the flea market will be closed. What will be open is the, um, the food area, uh, the one who's not kosher. 100 Israeli craft beers. Right in front of you, the 
beer bazaar and I took a group of uh, uh, Americans and they loved it. So many things to see here. Malabi, another Arabic uh, sweet dessert, excellent as well. And this is a sukkah. Sorry, you can see uh, sukkah, it's part, it's part of the Sukkot holiday. And he's got the four species in his hands. Uh, if you saw the video of, that I took of it um, at uh, uh, about Jerusalem, you could see that. Record! It became to be a smash hit. And this is this is Tel Aviv. It's totally different than the videos of uh, Al Jaffa, isn't it? A lot of noise, a lot of happiness. Young people, beautiful people, noisy. But that's that's what you want. That's Tel Aviv. And if I talk about more food. Uh, another amazing uh, place is called Pu'a, I think it's P-U-A, and this is Pu'a, and everything uh, is, uh, except of the food of course, it's from the flea market, and every table is different, every fork is different, glasses are different, you can buy the, the, uh, the plate together with the food. Asia. Again, another important place. Excellent food too. Uh, then all Jaffa is all about the food. <laughs> I will take you to see a little bit more of the flea market. Then in that case, we will go through here. No, we will go back. Get it quickly. Pua, it's P U double A. Lots of great food. Uh, who actually is gone, so I remember, but the, the, the service is amazing. The food is quite good. Lots of pubs. It's uh, Friday. It's actually every day here. And something new. It's called Ta -da! It's a sweet dessert boutique. The dessert boutique is excellent. It's a, near, it's a child. I think she's 19 years old. And she's doing it. And it's very, very trendy now. So many good desserts there. People like it. To your left side, it's another... Um, Food section. Let's go there because I love, uh, I love it. I mean, it's beautiful. You expect it to see only garbage. Uh, I'm showing you something different. That's a good nick pot tonight. It's going to be full with people. Another cafe. Baklava. Farouk in the market. It's the restaurant that you see in front of you I'm not going I'm not, I'm not going to continue I'm going to go back but this is a wonderful place to to enjoy a little bit of Eastern music look how beautiful it is The weather is amazing. It's September 24th or something like that. 
to reach that area on Friday with the car, it's like a suicide uh, mission. Yeah, the prices are in shekels, of course. This is my favorite place because it's young, trendy, and the food is different. It's like they have a twist in each dish, and it's lovely. It's called Shafa. Arabic, it's beautiful. Shafa. And that's another place, which is more like a bar. But in a bar you can find some pizza and uh, simple food, but good. The Tel Avivis love good food. It's difficult to walk here, so many people. If you saw the videos that I took early morning, I was the only one there. But if they're talking about flea market, let's go to see flea market. This is the hardcore of it. Um, almost sure that they started to say goodbye because Shabbat is on the way. Hummus Eliyahu, I feel like hummus. This is a kosher place. Uh, very, I don't know, trendy, but basic. And good. You can find hummus Eliyahu, which is Elijah, almost everywhere in Israel. And see more and more food areas. They started to say goodbye, but it's still on. You got the message again. Beautiful, beautiful things to to buy. I really love the books here. And. Uh, Mala be in the flea market in the regular days when the market is not open. I usually sit here with a nice uh, glass of wine and Malabi, which again are a big dish. I want to take you to the newest part of the flea market, which is more like Party, 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 and good food. I hope it's going to be open because it's, um, I think it's now almost. 3 p.m. and people are saying goodbye. They will say goodbye only until, let's say, 10 p.m. today, and they will come back to celebrate. You got the message, you got how beautiful it is. Oh, they are party, they know how to party. Market, there are hidden places that you must know, and this section is all about the flea market. The flea, flea, flea. I'm not sure that it's second hand or things like that. So look at Alice here, so many souvenirs, not expensive, beautiful, worth it.
there's two corridor here. You can actually go back because you got the message. Oh. It's longer than that. Um, okay. In the summertime, it's not cooler, but there's a lot of fans. And then it, uh, there's always wind here. Let's go to the news part. Till we reach there, if you are watching that video for the first time, my video for the first time, please subscribe my your my uh, YouTube channel and push the uh, bell when you subscribe, uh, and then you will be able to see my latest videos. And if you want to ask me questions you can ask me you can ask me through YouTube or at the description you will see my um, uh, professional Facebook account and uh, Instagram you can do that through there as well it's a wonderful cafeteria it's a kosher one milk bakery excellent coffee excellent bakery but it's kosher then don't come to your own Shabbat but it's beautiful here I love the place. Every Friday, and I think it's Saturday as well, there's a bazaar here in that part. It's called Pinchas Ben Yair Street. Pinchas Ben Yair Street. I know that it's difficult to remember the names here. <laughs> Wonderful, isn't it? Here, second hand of all the good uh, brands, vintage of Prada, Valentino, Klein, and all the stuff. I look at the stadium from that. I mean, look at that. Jaffe is all about art, a lot of food. Art, good music, good food, history. It's totally different than the first two video parts of Jaffa tour.
suddenly it's quiet. In less than 10 seconds, we will enter to the clock tower square. That's where I started the first tour. I ended the second tour of Jaffa. And you will see that it's all connected to each other. Here it is, in front of you, and the sun is in your eyes now. Try to go, that's my bus station. I will take the bus soon. If you love those videos, you, you, as I believe, I will upload those three individual uh, videos by itself. And uh, in about a month, I will add it into one video. You can see the tower of the main mosque in, uh, in uh, Jaffa. And that's a clock square and the clock tower that was built in 1903, 1904 for the Sultan control is the Ottomans word in Israel uh, was part of it at, um, at that time they built 100 uh, clock towers in the Ottoman words five of them was were in Israel early morning I was talking about uh, a very good bakery Abu Lafia but now you saw that there are a million places to eat and Abu Lafia is right there If you love that video, please subscribe, send it to everyone. I have more than 19,000 videos and there's a link that I will be happy if you will use. It's called Buy Me a Coffee if you want to support me, mainly because I'm not working from uh, um, March 2020 because of lack of tourists, then you are my family now. See you in my next video. Bye-bye.